All right, everyone, happy new year and welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, this is episode 19, the pressure capabilities of the Red Pyramid. So in today's episode, I'm gonna be discussing a couple of things that I don't usually mention here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel, which are technical details and mathematics, everyone's two favorite subjects. Specifically, in regard to the capabilities of the chambers inside of the Red Pyramid to produce pressure. So the question at hand for today's episode is, how much pressure can the chambers inside of the Red Pyramid produce? So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder for anyone that's interested in helping to support the channel, limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website, pick up a copy of the book. Secondly, to all of the new viewers and subscribers here on the channel, if you like the material, please leave it a like. Uh, if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification bell so that you get noticed whenever my new videos are released. And if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section below. So all of this interaction helps to get my material out into the algorithm and helps more people to find this channel. I really, really appreciate all your help and support and thank you all so much in advance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are looking into the final synthesis chamber of the Red Pyramid. And it is my theory that this chamber was meticulously engineered to produce ammonia gas and then an ammonia solution. So let's recall that the mechanism that allows this reaction to occur is by raising the water level inside of these chambers to compress water insoluble gases into the upper portion of this vault, decreasing the volume of the gases and increasing their temperature and pressure. So let's remember that hydrogen and nitrogen gases are going to completely fill this final synthesis chamber. And when they do fill this chamber, they're going to be at a relatively low pressure because they have a significantly high volume to move around here in the chamber. So as the water level is raised inside of this chamber, the water is essentially going to act like a plunger, compressing those water insoluble gases and forcing them into the upper portion of the vault. So let's recall from our ideal gas laws that pressure and volume have an inverse relationship in regard to gases. So again, hydrogen and nitrogen are gonna completely fill this large volume and they're gonna be at a relatively low pressure. However, we are going to raise the water level inside of the chambers, compressing the gases into the upper vault, reducing the volume and increasing the pressure. And that is the first mechanism of operation that we're gonna to discuss today regarding the function of this final synthesis chamber. So let's evaluate the modern process for the production of ammonia, which is something called the Haber process. And there are three variables that come into play in regard to the production of ammonia in the final synthesis chamber. So you have pressure, you have temperature, and you have catalysts. So we're gonna evaluate all three of these variables individually starting today with our discussion regarding pressure. So we see here that in our modern industrial process for the manufacture of ammonia, we're using pressures of 200 bar. And bar is simply the unit of measurement in regard to pressure. So just keep that in mind. The modern industrial process uses pressure of approximately 200 bar. All right, so this picture shows an estimate of the volume inside of the final synthesis chamber. So the total volume of the chamber is approximately 50 units. So I use these triangles to indicate single units. So remember, it's not just the white triangles, it's also the absent triangles there. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, et cetera, et cetera. There are approximately 50 units of volume here in this final synthesis chamber. So again, the mechanism of operation that allows this chemical reaction to occur is by raising the water level compressing the hydrogen and nitrogen into this portion of the final synthesis chamber. So our, we are reducing the volume in the chamber from 50 units to one unit. So what does that mean? Now, so what does that reduction of volume inside of the chamber mean for its capability to increase pressure? Well, there's a very simple equation that'll allow us to determine exactly how much pressure 
the final synthesis chamber of the red pyramid is capable of producing. And it's something called Boyle's Law, which integrates the inverse relationship between pressure and volume into a very nice equation, which is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. And the variables in this equation are pressure and volume. So your pressure, number one, times your volume, number one, equals pressure two and volume two. So let's start out and do the math and figure out exactly how much pressure this chamber can achieve. So our starting pressure inside of the chamber is approximately one bar or normal atmospheric pressure. There's no manipulation of pressure at this point. So you have your hydrogen and nitrogen gases confined into that final synthesis chamber under normal temperature, normal pressure, and they're at approximately 50 units of volume. Now, we are going to raise the water level inside of that chamber, compressing the gases into the upper portion of the vault and reducing the volume from 50 units to one unit. So what is that gonna do for the pressure inside of the chamber? Well, if we take a look at Boyle's law in this equation, if our pressure, starting pressure is one and our starting volume is 50, we know that our end volume is one so what does our end pressure have to be? Well, that end pressure would have to be 50 bar. So the final synthesis chamber of the red pyramid is capable of increasing pressure from one bar to 50 bar. And we saw in the previous slide that our modern manufacturing process for producing ammonia utilizes pressure of 200 bar. Well, you may be saying to yourself, well, 50 is significantly less than 200. Well, let's extrapolate that to a modern day example. So you're the plant manager or plant operator at your ammonia synthesis plant and your final synthesis chamber of your ammonia reactor, one of the pumps is down and you're only operating at 25% capacity. So normally your reactor can produce 200 bar of pressure. You got a pump down. Now you're only getting 50 bar of pressure. Again, we're taking out the variables for now of temperature and catalyst. So again, you're operating at 25% capacity producing 50 bar. A couple of questions for your plant manager. Is your reactor still working? Yes. Is the reaction as efficient as it was at 200 bar? Absolutely not. Is the reaction going to go as fast as it goes at 200 bar? Absolutely not. Is the product going to be as pure as it is as 200 bar? Absolutely not. But the two questions for the plant manager, if you have pumps down and your reactor is operating at 25% capacity, one, is your machine still running? Yes. Two, is your reactor still producing ammonia? Yes, absolutely. And that is my point, ladies and gentlemen, is that this may not be happening at the efficiency, purity, or yield as our modern industrial reaction. However, the point is that the reaction would still work. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem book are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website, pick up a copy of the book, grab a t-shirt. Either way, it really means a lot to me. Secondly, if you're enjoying the videos, please leave a like. If you like the material at large, definitely subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. If you have any feedback, please leave a comment below. All of this interaction helps to get this material out there. So help me spread the word, guys, and thank you so much in advance. All right, everyone, that is it for today's episode. This was episode 19, The Pressure Capabilities of the Red Pyramid. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. In the next video, I'm going to be doing a little follow-up on my video about the Great Pyramid, presenting some diagrams and animations that I think will help you to visualize the manufacturing process that I hope you enjoy. So everyone, again, Happy New Year. Thank you so much for your overwhelming support of the Land of Chem YouTube channel and the book. It really means the world to me. Thank you all so much, and I will see you next time.